Hey everybody, it's Safia Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again. I am here today, as I promised, to review The Goonies. Now, first off, <laughs> I'd like to give a little update because yesterday I was I was just so fed up and I I was like, okay, this is, <laughs> things are getting pretty bizarrely, like, just, it just seems like, isn't it weird, like, when you, when you sit around knowing something is bad that's happening, but you can't really do anything about it? That's what I was feeling like, because this cursed object, my friend who I gave it to, she didn't want to throw it away until we did the interview about it. Uh, for her site, and it's like, <laughs> I don't know, like, if it's such, if it's so cursed that it's trying to take away your house, it injures you, it basically, I mean, it basically, guys, it tore my entire abdominals, like, it, it like, slashed across my abdominals, and, it, and it's still torturing me a little bit, it's gotten so much better, but it's still torturing me, uh, and, you know, just to think about, like, you have an object that can cause that type of stuff, can cause that type of harm. You know, multiple car accidents, multiple girls to, uh, who were, you know, love interests, you know, getting with other people and marrying them. Uh, you know, it, it, to think that a little tiny piece of brick can cause all that trouble. And... I was like, you know, you should probably throw this away, like, I'm, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, it's, it's sort of, like, painful to sit around and wait to do this video and then for you to throw it away. Well, yesterday, I finally got my wish, because she had something happen yesterday that was very bad. She had to get an emergency car repair for $500, and the thing in her car was, it was so horribly messed up that if she hadn't have fixed it, she would have gotten in a horrible accident and probably died. And so that's the, that was the last straw for her. And so she finally threw it out. And, uh, you know, what can I say? I'm not surprised at all. I mean, I had already told her that it caused me to get in two or three, basically, car accidents, you know, like, I was, I was driving so well, I was so good at driving, I was so confident about it, and then I had those two things happen, and it was like, you know, this, this was not natural, like, th that's how you can, you know, you can feel if something that happens is natural or not, like, you can feel, I screwed up on that, I messed up, my fault, but when you feel like it's something outside of yourself that's causing this stuff, it's even worse a feeling. And that's what I felt like with the house, too. And so finally, finally, that piece of brick is thrown in the fucking trash. And who knows how long it'll take for the luck to reverse and for everything to reverse, but the process has begun. And it's as I predicted, everyone, how I had to watch Jumanji, and then I watched that Barbarian movie, and finally, finally it got thrown, uh, thrown away, excuse me. So interesting, the timing. And then I watched The Goonies, and it was, it was a great evening, because it, it felt, it genuinely felt like a huge weight lifted off of my back, and it was weird too because i had i felt this pressure completely leave from my abdominal area like i completely i had felt this like you know at certain points too these weird trigger points i would feel like uh like some sort of an outside force would start to cause pain in my abdominals at certain points and immediately when she threw it away, uh, some stuff happened, uh, good stuff, and then I also felt that pressure leave away, and, uh, 
is just very weird, very, very weird. And I also ordered a paranormal help session from a medium and a psychic, and I will be talking to her on Friday at 7 o'clock. So that's something else I'm going to do. And I want to make sure that this is all fully gone before I can send that letter to the owner of whatever company that owns my house. Uh, I did not want to send that letter while uh, I still had that cursed object. In fact, I even asked uh, the Magic 8-Ball. I said, should I send this letter now? And the Magic 8-Ball said, not advisable. <laughs> and so, you know, it just shows, like, it, things are so weird and it, it's been such a strange and, and terrible adventure, this whole thing. And speaking of strange and horrible adventures, we have the Goonies. And the Goonies, I would say this is one of the films in the world that I can definitely say is a perfect film. I mean, it is flawless from beginning to end. It is just 100% one of the greatest movies of all time. There's not a single thing wrong with it. I love everything about it. And so you're not going to hear any complaining from me this video, except for the complaining about the cursed object taking so long to get thrown away. You know, you know that kind of irritated me because I knew that like as long as it didn't get thrown away, that it would still be causing this terrible stuff to happen. And honestly, like, even whatever happens with the house, I can just be happy that finally the curse is taken away. And, you know, I think also the entity got scared that I ordered that session with that woman. Because that woman's very experienced, and she knows what she's doing. And I think the entity went like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I think it's like, okay, I'm going to start to go away now. <laughs> And I also asked it to go away, too. I told it, I ordered it, get, get GTFO. So, let's start off with one of the great things about the Goonies is, is the music, obviously. The music is just flawless from beginning to end. Like, I think my favorite song is obviously the Cindy Lauper song. You know, I, I didn't... I, I didn't really understand it as a kid. Like, when I was a kid and that song came on, I was sort of, like, weirded out. Like, why did they have, like, this this song playing on the TV? Like, I thought it was very weird. Uh, but I, I thought that that song was great. You know, the Goonies are good enough. I thought that that was... It's a very positive... And that's another thing, too. The, the whole movie's just very positive heartwarming, nostalgic. Like, this movie is is like how movies should be made in general. Like, these types of films, it pushes the boundaries. It's not just a kid's film. It's very positive. It's It has a lot of great life lessons. I mean, this is everything that you could ask for in a kid's film. It has horror elements that nowadays, you know, they probably say, uh-oh, this is too scary for children. And it has, you know, the kids actually talk like real kids, which would probably make, you know, people nowadays go, no, this is offensive. Especially, I think one of my favorite scenes of the film is when Mouth says, uh, Oh, don't worry, Miss Mrs. Walsh. I can speak sp perfect Spanish, and I would love to communicate with Rosalita. And then he starts, he starts touring her around the house and saying, like, this is where the sex dungeon is, and this is where you'll get locked in there with no food or water if if you don't do your job correctly. And it's just fucking hilarious because you could definitely imagine, like, if you were a kid and you were taking Spanish, and you knew how to do that, that, you know, you'd love to do that. You know, it, it seems like a really funny, fun thing to do, but I think in real life, you you probably get in serious trouble, uh, and she'd probably run away and call the police or something. 
Uh, but in terms of, like, you know, obviously the movie's a fantasy, and I thought that was one of my favorite moments, if not my favorite moment of the film. I laugh at that whole sequence every time I see it. And, of course, the movie starts off with another thing. I would say... <sighs> I think the the opening sequence might be my second favorite scene of the whole film because you have these bad guys and, of course, the Fratelli family. They're a great little crime family. You know, I, I do think that they're a little goofy at some points, but, you know, I think they had to make them goofy to a certain extent because they were pretty evil. I mean, they killed people. They did not care. Uh, they... They all seemed like sociopaths, you know, the way that they were manipulating uh, Sloth. And, of course, Sloth is a very interesting character because normally people, in my opinion, when they just talk about Sloth nowadays, they basically just use him as, like, I don't, like, a generic insult for, like, ugly people. Like, they just say, oh, you look like Sloth from the Goonies. You know, it's it's really weird because, like, everybody loves the Goonies and everybody loves Sloth. And so I don't know why, like, people use it as an insult. Like, you look like Sloth from the Goonies. It's like, yeah, like, Sloth is awesome. Like, he's one of the greatest movie characters of all time. And he, he was so integral to the plot, too. Like, if you didn't have Sloth in this movie, you wouldn't have the same movie. Like, you had to have that Sloth character. And I think he's he's really highly underrated in terms of film characters. In, you know, he, he goes from this completely broken, abused person who's deformed, and he probably, he's he's only been used to loving this crime family, he goes from that to being, like, a really happy person who finally has, like, a real family, uh, and he has a best friend and everything, and, and it's such a great story, and in fact, you probably could have just made a whole movie about him, like, you could have made a whole sequel just all about Chunk taking care of Sloth and how Sloth adapts to the real world, like, I don't think that people would hate that movie. Like, and I'll talk about, I will guess I'll talk, I'll talk about it right now. People asked, like, what should they do in a Goonies sequel? They, it, what are they just going to do? Do the same movie over again? No, of course not. I think, uh, personally, if you did that Sloth movie, that would have been great. Because Sloth, his character is so integral. So if you made a movie sequel all about him, and and you and it, it would almost be like a victory lap. Because, you know, you wouldn't have to do anything too crazy. You could just literally have it be like a coming-of-age film for a mutant creature person. You know, and everyone would love it. Or, I really think what would work... There's two options. Number one... The first movie, it's very distinctly a pirate adventure comedy movie. It sticks very close to being a pirate film. There's so many pirate film elements. Uh, you know, I can tell that the people who made the movie, they were fans of swashbuckling adventure movies, and they definitely modeled elements after those films. Uh, so if you made a sequel to The Goonies then you could just switch up the genre. You know, instead of making a pirate adventure throwback movie, make a Star Wars throwback movie. You know, you can make Star Wars while Disney uh, sucks an egg and makes their shitty-ass shit Star Wars movies that don't even count, in my opinion. Uh, well, actually, I don't think... I don't, I gotta be honest, like, the only Star Wars stuff that I care about is the original trilogy, uh, the books, and then the video games. That's all I care about. I don't care about the prequels. I don't care about anything that Disney ever made. Uh, the only Star Wars I care about is the original trilogy, the video games, and the books. 
those are the only things Star Wars related worth caring about. Uh, completely, 100%. You know, the prequels, they're trash. You know, they're boring, miserable, crybaby soap opera trash. And, <laughs> like, there's elements of them that are good. But anyway, uh, you could do that. Or, I really think what I would do, imagine making a sequel to The Goonies where the kids all go to their favorite summer camp Camp Crystal Lake and you could do a remake of Friday the 13th with Jason and Jason's mom and Jason's mom she could be the bad guy you could have Jason be like the sloth character or you could have it be where the mom is like the sloth character and but anyway the concept is do Friday the 13th but with the Goonies that would be fucking epic. And the whole story could be... Or it, the whole story could be is that after Friday the 13th happened, they're going to close down this camp forever after this last group of kids goes there. And so you could have the Goonies go to camp, and you could have all sorts of stuff happen there, all sorts of fun and games, uh, you know, funny Goonies antics. And then you could have Jason coming out to try to kill them. You could have them kill a bunch of people. It would have been so fucking awesome. Jason meets the Goonies. That's 100% what I would have done. Uh, and I couldn't... I honestly... I don't think they should do anything else, to be honest. I also think, though, they could do another thing. You know, Chunk was talking about, like, these weird scenarios like he's a liar he's like a pathological liar <laughs> and he talks about how uh michael jackson's michael jackson's sister came over to take a wee wee in his house and what would be really cool is if you made a sequel all about chunk telling some really big lie to get out of a really big problem and then he has to find some way to prove it. And so let's say, like, he burns down his school. And so, uh-oh, he's got to figure out a way out of this. So maybe he blames it on, like, some big actor or something. Or maybe he blames it on, like, a mobster or something. Like, or a serial killer. And so he has to actually go with sloth and try to find this person and try to frame it on them. You know, I think that that would be a great sequel idea because they had that as like an element of this film uh, to make him more of like a funny, unique character. And then, of course, he does the truffle shuffle and he is just hilarious. I mean, he is obviously... I think, yeah, he is my favorite member of the Goonies. I think... Uh, you know, he's just too hilarious. And then, of course, you have the moment, one of the infamously funny moments, probably a moment that I quote, like, all the time, like, you got to tell us everything, everything, everything. He's like, okay, I'll tell you everything. In first grade, I I fucking threw my sister down the stairs. In second grade, I peeped on these girls in the bathroom. In third grade, I cheated on my test. And then I, I lied about it to the teacher. Like that, that was, I got, <laughs> that was like the funniest scene in film history. That was my favorite scene of the film. It was just so hilarious. It was such a great, uh, uh, what would you call it, like a subversion of like an interrogation scene? <laughs> like where these hardcore criminals are questioning this little kid about how to find the other kids in the treasure. And then <laughs> he's talking about all these these lies that he told. And, and he does it so well, too. Like, I don't know how the hell these kids were such good actors. Like, they they were so good they're better than all the adult actors that I see today. Like Florence Pugh. 
Uh, she's got nothing on Corey Feldman and the Goonies. Uh, who else? Who else? Let's talk about them. Oh, oh. Let's. What are some of the overrated male actors? Like the, some of the, the shitty, like just. Yeah. Uh, well, Chris Evans. I mean, he's not very good. Uh, he's he's just he's just kind of like a a one note. Uh, I don't know. I was gonna like rhyme it like one note something, but I can't really think a one note toad. I don't know. Uh, Chris Evans has nothing on Sloth and the Goonies, or I mean, Sloth isn't a kid, but yeah, uh, <laughs> he doesn't have anything on data. Sorry, but he just doesn't. And I know that some people, you know, it, it's really hilarious because everyone is so, they're so like obsessed with this, this diversity bullshit and the, these agendas. But then you have in the eighties, you have this Asian main character and he's like the heart of the film. He's, he's one of the hearts of the film. Uh, and there's this really beautiful scene with him at the end where he has a, a really nice moment with his father that that used to be like a a teary eye moment for me as a kid. I watched that scene at the end and I thought that was a really good moment and he did such a good job. He was not like a stereotype even though he he was funny and you could you could bullshit and say he's a stereotype. He was not at all a stereotype and uh you know, I love all of his inventions. They're really cool. I mean, that was an awesome element of the film. And just imagine, like, Friday the 13th. He's got to, like, come up with inventions to use against Jason. I mean, that'd be so fucking awesome. Oh, my God. I, I just... I, I, I swear. I have said that if I had a time machine, I would do this. I would do that. I'd go back to the 60s. I would go balls deep in Audrey Hepburn, uh, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, what I would do now, after just thinking about it, I would go to the 80s and make fucking Goonies meets Jason. I mean, there is no question that that's what I would do if I could go back in time. Well, actually, there's a little bit of a question, because there's something else I want to do, but, uh Jason meets Goonies, it just, it has to happen, like, that is just, I swear, oh, oh, God, I found the perfect comparison, the overrated as hell kids from the Stranger Things, Ugh. I mean, what a group of just completely overrated, uh, I, I'm not going to say talentless, but just completely, like, ugh, what trash uh, actors. Like, I, I swear, like, I am so sick of, like, every single, I, I get so mad when, like, every single kid's role is, or just every role in general is, like, filled by the same couple of people. It's like, j just because these people are famous doesn't mean they should always get every role. Like I believe me, I've ca I've ca I cast movies. I've cast in my own film and uh believe me, I would not cast the actress who played the main character in my last one to play the main one in this one. You know what I mean? Like it, it's just a dipshit thing to do. And uh and I got to say like Finn Wolfhard, he's got nothing on Sean Astin in the Goonies. Do I need to go on? I mean, Sean Astin in the Goonies. Now, here's the thing. I really, as a kid, I used to really, like, underrate Mike, Mikey from the Goonies. You know, I kind of thought he's, like, the serious one. He's the one who, he kind of drives the group forward, so he's kind of boring. But he's my, he's, like, my favorite now. He's just so, uh, his character is so heartfelt and he's so cool and he's so badass the way that he kisses Andy and, uh, you know, he does all this awesome stuff with the, you know, the idea of the marbles and, uh, giving Willie all the stuff so that it won't activate the trap. You know, that's something that, you know, I really like that too, because I get so sick of these, 
these treasure movies where people find a treasure and then they're like, I'm going to take treasure. And then they get cursed or something or they're, it's like a, a trap activates. And it's like, God, can't they find some way around this? Like in real life, like people steal treasures all the time. So, I mean, have you ever heard of fucking uh, archaeologists? I mean, from the past, like that's literally all they do is just go to these places and like steal other people's treasures and then take them across the sea to America and then put them in museums. Like that's literally all they did. And, and they didn't get cursed and they didn't have like booby traps activate on them. And so I think that like, I loved it in this movie, how there was a trap, but the Goonies were smart enough to figure out, yeah, we should put all this on there to make it seem like that's the treasure. And I loved, of course, the fact that they actually did get some treasure at the end, and it did help them keep all their houses, and it just completely, like, destroyed those rich douchebag pieces of shit with Troy and his family. Uh, ugh. Uh, <laughs> I love that. That was such a satisfying moment. I mean, to me, the Fratellis were villains, but if the Goonies didn't have this disgusting, rich uh, corporation or whatever, if they didn't have this disgusting group of people try to destroy their homes so that they could build a golf course on top of it, then they wouldn't have even had to meet the Fratellis. So, really, I think the true villains of the film are is Troy and his family. And so that's something else you could also discuss. Is like, yeah, the Fratellis are kind of like villains of circumstance. Like, the, these Goonies, they never would have met them. Uh, so, what else to talk about? Well, obviously, there's the very famous... I, I would say... I keep on saying, like, this is the best moment of the film. This is the best moment of the film. That's how good this movie is. The whole movie is the best moment of the film, you know? Like, that's how good this movie is. But, of course, the scene where Mouth says, uh, this, this coin right here is my dream. It's my wish. I'm taking all my wishes back because they didn't come true. That was a fantastic scene. But, of course... You have the moment where Mikey says, this is our time. Goonies never say die. I mean, that that is a speech for film history. Uh, that whole scene is just like, as I said, like, I don't know how these kid actors out act all these grown ass adults in 2022. You know, like, honestly, like, I don't think that I'm doing as good of a job in my own film as these act kid actors from the Goonies. And so I got, <laughs> I'm going to have like trouble waking up and looking at myself in the mirror now because I'm going to look at myself and be like, why the hell am I not doing as good as data from the Goonies? Like, why am I not do, I'm, I'm just, I, th this is pathetic. Chunk from the Goonies is out acting me and I was the chunk of my own school and this is fucked up, and I got I got to start doing something. And I, I, I it's probably just because I don't have anyone else to like direct my acting. I'm directing myself, and so that's probably why. But still, <laughs> it's pretty funny to think about. Like, just think about like an actor from nowadays watching this video and then <laughs> taking a look at themselves in the mirror and being like, you know. That Sean Astin, as an adult, he wasn't very good. But when he was a kid in the Goonies, he was an Oscar contender. <laughs> I mean, obviously, Sean Astin, he did some good roles when he grew up, too. Uh, that's just a joke right there. I know. I know. I know. Uh, of course, he, he was in a Monk episode, which I think that his role in this Monk episode is my favorite thing he's ever done. He did this one where Monk has to become a butler for this really rich douchebag played by Sean Astin. And it turns out that he killed his parents or something to inherit his parents' fortune. 
And, like, the whole episode is just, like, hilarious. And one of the best Monk episodes of all time. So, another great part of the film, probably... I'm not going to rank all the scenes in the Goonies, but, you know, they're all fantastic. But, of course, the opening sequence, I always... When I was a kid, I always, like, looked forward to just watching, like, the opening sequence, honestly where the criminals are driving along and they're getting shot at by the police. And then you have uh, Data seeing it and then, he, and then he gets turned upside down in the trash can. And then you have uh, Mouth and you have the, the sink and everything and the water going everywhere. And, and you, ha- you have Chunk and he's in the arcade and he's like, Oh, wow! a police chase and then he's like i don't know what that was was that like a strawberry shake or something because i gotta say that is the most liquidy strawberry shake i have ever seen like i have strawberry shakes on a i don't know probably like four or five times a year at mcdonald's and uh, that that's like the liquidiest strawberry shake I've ever seen. But he like spills it all over and he smudges the, the pizza against the glass. And he's like, ah, shit. Like that that's another great moment of the film. And, and you just got to think like, does, does he just go to this arcade all the time? And he just buys the same old thing to eat. He gets a slice of pizza and he gets a strawberry shake and he goes to the the same game over and over like that that that's another great thing about this movie is that you can really feel like the characters live outside the movie and somebody else brought that up on I think it was film threat YouTube channel they brought up that like they like it in movies when characters have a life outside the movie story like you can tell that <coughs> sorry you can tell that, like, between sequels, these characters have done stuff. You know, they've they've moved on with their lives. Their whole lives aren't just dependent on the events of the first film. You know, I, I think it's kind of the same thing for this movie. Like, it feels like there's this established, rich universe of characters. The only characters who I kind of think were a little underdeveloped, I guess you could say would be Troy and his family, but I did see on YouTube the Goonies deleted scenes, some of them that they played on the TV versions, and there are some actually really good scenes that they should have left in the, in the film, uh, where I think it involves Troy, and I think it's like something where he's in the gas station or something, and uh, that was a great deleted scene. But there was uh, something that they deleted involving, like, apes escaping from the zoo. I think it was probably good they left that out, to be honest. But everything else they probably should have kept in. Like, even even the octopus. Like, the octopus thing. Uh, I, I, I gotta be honest. I never even remember Data saying, The octopus was very scary. <laughs> but now, every time I'm gonna watch that movie... I'm I'm just going to kind of be like really weirded out at the end because what they should have done was after they decided they're not going to put the octopus in the film, they should have had Chunk be the one to say the octopus was very scurry because obviously Chunk is the, he's the liar boy. And so if you had him saying the octopus was scary you could have just had that be like a little thing like, oh, there's another lie from Chunk and all the other stuff he's saying is true. <coughs> so, the Goonies, it is incredible. It is just, I mean, I could go on and on and on, like everything. This is a perfect film. I'd highly recommend it. it it's, it's just so perfect. And I own a piece from the original Goonies house. Uh, the house is still, I think it still exists, but they said something about the porch. They had to completely redo the porch, and then they actually remembered that they had this big slab of wood from the porch, and so they cut up pieces of it and sold them on eBay for like $50 each, 
I bought that. I never had any bad luck from that, of course, because that was a great movie made by great people. And, uh, yeah, just The Goonies, it is one of the greatest movies of all time. And now I'm going to rate it in terms of food. It's funny because normally, for some reason, when I watch movies, I always eat something that's almost like a perfect rating for the film. Uh, The same goes with Safi for some reason. I don't know why. (coughs) But when I first watched this film, I got to confess, the first time I watched this, I ate some, some, some frozen fish sticks with green beans and what did I have rice uh let's see with a with with a baked potato I I, now I remember frozen fish sticks with green beans and a baked potato and I gotta say obviously that is not worthy of the Goonies, okay? It was just something we used to do. You know, we would have fish sticks night. That was sort of like... We would have pizza night on Friday. We would have fish stick... Fish stick... Fish... Fish stick... Fish... 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 Fish stick... Fish... Stick... Fish... 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 Stick... Night on Thursday. Uh, so... Anyways, for this film, I think that I'm going to have to give it something that I also ate while watching it at a later date. <laughs> See, I just tricked you guys there because it, it in a different time that I watched The Goonies as a kid, I remember clearly eating Chinese food. And I got to say, like, this is this is like when you make Chinese food at home. You make genuine Chinese food. You don't get... Chinese food from a takeout place where it's like really gross and and just greasy and not authentic. You know, you make it at home. You make like a nice chicken stir fry. And the thing that I really think is why the Goonies is like stir fry is because when you eat Chinese food, every single element has to be on point for that dish to work. And the, the same goes for this movie. This movie is an ensemble movie. It relies on every Goonie being perfect. It relies on the villains being perfect, the music. Everything in this movie worked just, excuse me, just like with this Chinese stir-fry that we ate. And, of course, you have the rice, you have the, uh, the carrots, the onion, the broccoli, the pieces of chicken, you got the soy sauce you put on top because the sauce isn't flavorful enough, or you just want some extra zing from the soy sauce, and it just all works together so beautifully and so well that it's like, yeah, this is a perfect meal for a perfect movie, and I love it. I don't have anything bad to say about it at all. So, oh yeah, and in terms of love interests, uh, I think that Andy's pretty good, and I also think if you were to make another Goonies, another thing that you could do is that you could have a story be where Andy is going to move away for some reason, and you could have it be like where she goes to like a cheerleading camp because maybe like she wants to get a cheerleading scholarship, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how that stuff works. I never did cheerleading, obviously. I I never did any sport except for bowling uh, outside of school, of course. You could have the Goonies infiltrate a cheerleading camp. And you could have all the Goonies dress up like girls. And you could have them try to go to a cheerleading camp to convince Andy to not move away. Or something. I don't know. Or maybe she breaks up with Brant or Brand, and uh, and maybe they go there to try to convince her to hook up with him again. Uh, that's what I would do. Oh no, I'd do the Jason one. But anyways, that that's just what I wanted to talk about the most because whenever people talk about the Goonies, that, that, that that's like the the most they either say, "I like the Goonies, but it's a little overrated." Which, you know, honestly, 
you could say any classic movie is overrated. That doesn't make it overrated because it's still like a 10 out of 10 iconic film. Another thing they always talk about is what could they even do in a sequel? They're just going to make the same movie. Like, no, don't make the same movie at all. Do Jason Meets the Goonies. I swear, if you did that, it would make billions and gazillions and gazillions. It would be just like Top Gun Maverick, where it's 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 just like it, everyone loves it, and it makes a ton of money, and it becomes one of the greatest films of all time, just like the first one. That's what I have to say. So please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of The Goonies, because it's really funny, like, when I do a positive review, you'll have people who dislike it, and then they say, I didn't like this movie, it sucked! It sucked, and your reviews sucked too! And then you have, like, reviews where I'm negative, and and they're like, what are you talking about? This is the greatest thing of all time! Did you even watch the same movie that I watched? And it's like, you, you just can't win with some people. Like, some people just deliberately say the opposite of what you say, on purpose for some reason. And then please subscribe to this channel. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. That's what I sounded like right there. Uh, if you'd like to see more honest movie reviews on YouTube. So goodbye, everybody. See you soon.